Hey, welcome to Mini Beginner's Crash Course. My name is Lisa Jung, and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. This course is for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In Season 2, we're building a full-stack JavaScript app that could search for earthquake data stored in Elasticsearch. In the previous episode, we retrieved earthquake data from the USGS API and transformed and ingested data into Elasticsearch. In today's episode, we'll be building the client with React. So let's talk about the relevant resources for this episode. All the links to these resources are included in the description box. Throughout the episode, I'll be going over terminal commands and code. If you want to copy and paste these, check out part 8 of the blog series as these are all included there. Next, we have a GitHub repo for episode 8. So check out branch 5 for the project directory from this episode. So let's do a review of what we'll build. Our client allows the user to search for earthquakes based on quake type, magnitude, location, and date range. It also allows the user to sort the search results by ascending or descending order of magnitude. When the user hits the search button, the user input is sent to the server via HTTP request. The server passes the user input into an Elasticsearch request and sends a request to Elasticsearch. Now, Elasticsearch retrieves relevant documents and sends the documents to the server. The server sends the documents to the client. Upon receiving the documents, the client displays the results in the form of cards. Each card contains information about one earthquake. Throughout the season, we've been working with the earthquake app directory. In this directory, we have added the server-side code under the server directory. In this episode, we'll be adding the client-side code to the earthquake app directory. All right, so let's get started. Open a new terminal then cd into the earthquake app directory and execute the following command to create a React app. Now this command can be found in blog part eight, step one. This command creates a React app called client within the earthquake app directory. Once the React app is created, cd into the client directory. Now we'll be using a library called Axios to send HTTP requests to our server. So install Axios by executing the following command, and this command is found in block part 8, step 2. From the code editor, expand the client directory and open the package.json file, and you'll see that a library called Axios has been installed. In the same file, we'll add the proxy key and point the proxy at localhost 3001 where our Node.js server is running. Now add the following code between the scripts and ESLint config object as shown here. Now when you look within the client directory, you'll see the src directory here. When you expand this directory, you could access the app.js file. App.js will house the code that builds a client side of our app. Now you'll replace the default content of app.js with the code that you see here. Now this code is found in block part 8, step 4. Next, we'll add styling seen in the client. So go to the app.css file and replace the default content of app.css with the code that you see here. And this code is also found in block part 8, step 5. All right, so let's go over the code. We'll only focus on the code shown in app.js. In lines 1 through 3, we import all the dependencies we'll need to carry out our desired tasks. In line 1, we import Axios to send HTTP requests to the server. In line 2, we import useStateHook to manage state. In line 3, we import app.css to apply styling to the page. To explain the code in a logical manner, I may skip around a little bit, so be sure to pay attention to the line numbers. Lines 36 through 149 are responsible for what the users see when they first interact with our app. All right, so let's take a look at lines 38 through 46. Line 40 renders the app name displayed on the page. Line 45 renders directions for the users. Lines 51 through 62 create the drop-down menu for quake types. The user gets to choose from four options, earthquake, query blast, ice quake, an explosion, and each option has a value associated with it. When a user chooses an option from the select control, 
Its value is set as state for the chosen type variable, and the state variable for chosen type is defined in line 6. The next drop-down menu allows the user to select the magnitude level. The user gets to choose from five options, 2.5+, plus, 5.5+, plus, 6.1+, plus, 7+, plus, and 8+. Plus. When a user chooses an option from the select control, its value is set as state for the chosen mag variable, and the state variable for chosen mag is defined in line 7. The user could also specify the location of earthquakes they're interested in. Lines 80 through 90 create a form where the user could type in the city, state, or country of interest. When a user types in a location, the user input is set as state for the chosen location variable, and the state variable for chosen location is defined in line 8. The next drop-down menu allows the user to select the date range. Lines 93-104 create this drop-down menu. So the user gets to choose from four options, past 7 days, past 14 days, past 21 days, and past 30 days. When a user chooses an option from the select control, its value is set as state for the chosen date range variable. And the state variable for chosen date range is defined in line 9. The next drop-down menu allows the user to sort the search results by descending, or ascending level of magnitude. The user gets to choose from two options, largest magnitude first or smallest magnitude first. When a user chooses an option from the select control, its value is set as state for the chosen sort option variable. And the state variable for chosen sort option is defined in line 10. Next, we have our search button. Line 119 creates the search button. We set it up so that when the button is clicked, it calls the send search request function. All right, so let's go over the send search request function here. In line 14, we create a constant called results. We specify that we want to send a get request to our server with a URL ending in forward slash results. Within this request, we pass the params, the user input that were collected. We use Axios to send the get request to our server. Now remember, when the client sends a user input to the server, the server will pass the user input into an Elasticsearch request and send the request to Elasticsearch. Now Elasticsearch will then retrieve the relevant documents and send these documents to the server and upon receiving these documents, the server will send the results to the client. When the client receives the search results from the server, the client will print the response to the console. In line 11, we define the state variable called documents. When we receive the results from the server, we update the state variable documents to include search results sent from the server. If an error were to occur during this process, we print the error in the console. All right, so we just went over how we could display a list of search options for the user and how to capture the user input and send it to the server. Next, we're going to focus on how the client should handle the documents that were retrieved from Elasticsearch. Now, the lines 123 through 146 handle documents received from the server. These lines of code are only rendered when documents are received from the server. We set up a ternary operator to specify that when the number of documents is greater than zero, the number of documents is displayed on the screen. If the number of documents returned are zero, then display the message, no results found, try broadening your search criteria. In lines 130 through 144, the client runs through the documents and creates a card for each document in the array. Each card displays the following information about each earthquake, type, time, location, latitude, longitude, magnitude, depth, significance, and event URL. And this information is accessed by document dot underscore source dot name of the field. All right, let's test this out. So go to your terminal, cd into the project directory, then into the client directory, then execute npm star to start your client. You'll see that our client is displayed here. Now when you click on each select option, it'll render the corresponding drop-down menu.
It also displays a form where a user could type in the location of interest. In this episode, we've created a client that displays a list of search options for the user. We set up the client so that it captures the user input and send the user input to the server. Now, we also set up the client to receive search results from the server and display the results in the form of cards. In the next episode, we'll set up our server to pass the user input received from the client into an Elasticsearch request and send it to Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch will then retrieve the relevant documents and send the documents to the server. And we'll set up our server to receive the documents and send the documents to the client so the results could be displayed to the user. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.